I'm with six. Savannah is home to Georgia's first mm. ever Boys and Girls Club. And this week, the Frank Gallon Boys and Girls Club celebrates 100 years of providing children with a safe place to learn and grow. A century of service. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. WJCL's Marvis Herring shows us how this organization is really making a difference in our community. <laughs> Summer camp is in full swing at the Frank Callen Boys and Girls Club on East Charlton Street in Savannah. It offers a safe place for around 250 kids from 5 to 18 years old to learn and have fun. The kids got out of school on a Tuesday. Frank Callen was open that Wednesday for summer camp. They go back on August the 3rd. The last day of camp is July 29th. So we don't give them time to really get into anything and see isn't that sad that you got like if then if all the time is occupied man <laughs> like you can't leave them alone you can't yeah they're running the summer camp like a jail right this this is great i think this is great what they're doing that's why i, I clicked on this but it's just still like when it's people sad. say that there's differences you know not better or worse. There's just differences with the groups. This woman would fucking be irate if you if you if you propose that to her. Yet she says this. Ten years old to learn and have fun. The kids got out of school on a Tuesday. Frank Callen was open that Wednesday for summer camp. They go back on August the third. The last day of camp is July 29th. So we don't give them time to really get into anything. And CEO Mark Lindsay says that's why Frank Callen started this club more than 100 years ago, hoping to steer young people away from bad decisions. This side of town was primarily young African-Americans, and he saw a way to get them off the streets and actually to... Just listen to what he just said. Like, this guy right here, this woke guy, he would fucking flip if he just had to sit through two minutes of this fucking show, he would fucking be pulling his eyes out. Yes. Yeah, for 100 years, we've been trying to keep some kids <laughs> off the streets. He says it as if, like, well, if another white person said that, they'd be a racist uh, with a different, you know, political affiliation. If they said the exact same thing he just said. This side of town was primarily young African-Americans, and he saw a way to get them off the streets and actually to give them another, I guess, chance and lease on life. Oh. Kid Rock used to be a rapper. He couldn't get away with saying that. Young African-Americans, and he saw a way to get them off the streets and actually to give them another I guess, chance and lease on life. From playful games to financial literacy classes and even gang prevention programs, the youth development lessons at this Boys and Girls Club have prepared thousands of its alumni for the future. Officials say 98% of their kids are graduating on time. And they're doctors, they're lawyers, they're professional athletes, they're former mayors and um, elected officials now, my alderman here, is a former club kid. A lot of times, um, kids who are considered troubled kids, when they get here, you find that they just want to belong and they're having so much fun. And that's when your purpose, uh, your passion turns into your purpose for me. Just to watch the many, many uh, youth that come through Frank Callen graduate, go on to do great things and never forget about the club. It's an awesome feeling. In Savannah, Marvis Herring, WJCL 22 News. St. Louis's trash troubles have gotten so bad, city residents may not be getting weekly pickup. Despite the piles of trash in many alleys, city officials say they are making progress. Fox News' Andy Baker has the story all new at 10. This is St. Louis's long, hot, disgusting summer. City officials, including the mayor, are asking for patience, posting on social media that more routes are being picked up. Help is on the way, but more and more city residents say that's not good enough. Why do we have to live like this? A reporter with our partners at the Post Dispatch tweet. Why do we have to live like this? What's the what's the demographics in St. Louis? 
somebody in this demographics. You already know Cori Bush is the congresswoman, the blood, the, the, the BLM. I remember activist. correctly, it's like 60%, but I'll look it up. 60, 60 percent, son. That's why you have to live like this. The fuck you got a question is that? No. Why do we have to live like this? A reporter with our partners at the Post Dispatch tweeted video of a mess she passed walking her dog this morning, saying it had been there for weeks. In May, city officials held a news conference announcing the return of home recycling service and a new data-driven garbage plan with areas in red seeing more trucks, but the entire city still getting at least one pickup every week. The city of Look at the red. No, it's 45-45, even split. 45-45? 45 is a lot of sun people. My God, that's a lot. Every week. City officials now confirm that has not been happening. It was definitely no. more than a week. This resident says her dumpsters were finally emptied last week, not so for the block next to hers. It's definitely a health and safety issue. I mean, um, we're not the only place we've seen rats starting to move around. And if you come out at night, there's like a real kind of roach presence more than I think you'd typically get. So yeah, it's a big deal. The city has 48 daily trash routes. One month after the news conference, fewer than 30 were getting picked up. The city's trash commissioner was placed on leave last week. Those city officials say the key issues with pickup, equipment failure, and a labor shortage are not his fault. And they now report progress, posting on social media that the number of daily routes has climbed to 35. A spokesman says the city's refuse division is still short 10 drivers and still offering $3,000 bonuses for new ones. As a so if, you, if you're if a Sunland and you're looking for a job in St. Louis, they're offering a $3,000 bonus to drive a trash truck. And they need 10 more drivers. But and you, you have know they're going to be playing pretty well, too, for it. You have to subject, subject yourself to whiteness, though. <laughs> you have to show up to work on time and all that other white stuff. Did anybody else see the overgrown weeds and everything in the background in the area where they're not picking up the trash? <laughs> yeah, I mean... You know how this gets fixed? Privatization. That's how this gets fixed. Listen, man. You know who's running this city? Dollar bonuses for new ones. As of last week, our average daily uh, number of routes that we hit was 35. Uh, and we know that this uh, the major factors contributing to this are being shorthanded on staff. Um, as well as the availability of trucks. And so in an effort to be more transparent, uh, we are letting the public know that or how many uh, routes we are picking up on on average each day. And we start tonight with continuing coverage of Portsmouth City Council. A group of protesters showed up to tonight's meeting to protest decisions of council. It was the first meeting with a full council and Tanya Chapman, a city manager. And ten of your size, Andy Fox, was also at tonight's meeting, Andy. Yeah, it was another tough meeting. And this is the first meeting that I have covered since the recall effort began, that it was launched against two council members. It is clear most of the audience driven by the desire to get a whole new city council and the desire to do that cannot be mistaken animus against some members of Portsmouth City Council began to show at this Portsmouth City Hall protest, trying to recall Vice Mayor DeAndre Barnes and Councilman Mark Whitaker. I hate to say stop this deal, but they've stolen our government. They've broken it, and, and we need to do something about it. The word ethics from Susan Freeman. It's ethics is perfect. That's what's going on. There's nothing ethical about our, our city council. Portsmouth resident Steve Carroll was at that protest, and during council, his comments directed at the new city manager, Tanya Chapman, handpicked by Whitaker and Barnes and councilman Chris Woodard and Paul Bath. Yet our new city... Do you notice that all the protesters out there are fucking gliders? And all the city council people are fucking sun people. Yet... This won't be considered racism because those gliders are Democrats. Look at the you city one council. sister in there. Look at the city council. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten people on the city council, nine of them are black. And then when you look at the protesters, see, conservative, conservative, yeah, well, Look at the same thing. Nine out of the fucking most of the fucking protesters are fucking white. 
But if these were conservatives, these people would be fucking like considered like a fucking um a goddamn um white nationalist group if they were out here doing this shit. That's how that's the difference between fucking liberals and conservative and um fucking um conservatives. White liberals get to do shit, get to do this shit, get to protest black politicians, which rightfully they should be able to. The conservatives will be fucking arrested for this shit. Nothing ethical about our, our city council. Forsyth resident Steve Carroll was at that protest, and during council, his comments directed at the new city manager, Tanya Chapman, handpicked by Whitaker and Barnes and councilman Chris Woodard and Paul Bath. Yet our new city manager, not long on the job, fired our current police chief for reasons that I believe are not adequate. Yes, sir. Mayor Shannon Glover had a gavel the council chamber quiet. Tanya Chapman painfully listening. A city manager herself was hired under the most strange and inexplicable standards that I've ever seen in this city. She was hired without conversations with three of the city council members. The four of you won't get it together with the rest of them that are trying to do right. Look at the gliders up here reading this all black city council and mayor their rights, the riot act. And there's no fucking cries of racism. Nobody's fucking bitching. You wouldn't do this if we were white. Because they're fucking liberals. Right by this city. And it is clear the people in this council chamber are opposed to the four council member majority. We are all one body back here. And you won't listen to us because the seven of you can't get it together. This frequent speaker at city council meetings reminded those gathered council meetings are not sporting events. Uh, it's tough to maintain good order in a room full of people. And it's incumbent on the people who are sitting in the room to regulate their own behavior. You left the council meeting tonight thinking there will be more tough city council meetings ahead. The recall effort continues to gather signatures to recall Councilman Whitaker and Vice Mayor Barnes and to vote out of office Councilman Battle and Woodard in November. I'm Andy Fox, 10 on your side.